There have been at least 12, at least 12 school shootings in America so far in 2018. It's February 15th. We're averaging one just about every three or four days. How we do in America? Everyone okay with that? Apparently the answer is in fact yes, because we haven't done virtually anything to stop it. We haven't done virtually anything. We all know what is about to happen right now, don't we? We're going to say how sorry and shocked and sad we are, and then we're going to move on without doing anything. And then we'll express how sorry and shocked and sad we are at the next one, and the one after that. Does anyone really think that we are going to do anything after these mass murders? I don't. I don't believe that. I don't believe in a single one of these politicians. I don't believe any of them have the courage it takes to actually push through reform. Why? Because history. And let's face it. Let's face it. It's not all on them because we, the people, are the ones who hire and fire these politicians. So if we don't get serious, neither will they. Five years ago, I was live on the air and pregnant with my third child when 20 first graders were shot to death in school in Newtown, Connecticut. That was the one. That was the one where we all thought, now we will do something. Now we have to change. But we didn't. In fact, since Newtown, there have been nearly 300 school shootings in America, about one a week. If 20 dead first graders don't spur people to action, what will? Yes, there was an act signed into law by President Obama just about 15 months ago targeting mental health reforms. It pushes for early intervention for kids showing signs of mental illness. But guess what? It hasn't been funded by Congress. It's a beautiful piece of paper. I'm sure it's a great comfort to the folks in Florida today. We had a woman on this show just last week, jumping up and down, a mother, trying to warn people that her own son is a potential danger. She's seen it. She said he's killing animals, consuming dark and disturbing pornography, and no one will help her. She said their social worker dumped the family after learning how disturbed her son was. What could possibly go wrong? And then there is the truth that mental instability by itself is not a great predictor of a, mass, of a mass shooting. Most mentally ill people do not commit murder. So even if we fund the mental health reforms, how do we find the potentially deadly needles in these haystacks who are likely to blow? Well, we could start by paying attention, paying attention to things like Facebook posts with ominous gun pictures, coupled with social alienation and other red flag warning signs. But then what? Then what? Are we really going to loosen the standards for involuntary commitment in this country? Even if we could pay for that, good luck convincing the ACLU that it's legal. And then there are the guns. Don't, don't even think about it. Don't even think about it. No gun reforms are getting through. They're not. And most of the ones that will be proposed in the wake of this shooting will be utterly meaningless and wouldn't have even arguably prevented this killing. The NRA is too powerful. Our politicians are too weak, and the guns are too ubiquitous. Guess how many guns there are in America, do you know? Over 300 million. They say 6 to 10 million AR-15s, like the one reportedly used in Florida. So now, we've seen it a million times, we're going to debate that gun. But any, any semi-automatic pistol can unleash carnage. There was no AR-15 at Virginia Tech, and that remains the worst school shooting in U.S. history. 32 dead. Nothing changed. Nothing. Can it? In the meantime, I and other parents have to send our kids to school and play Russian roulette with their lives. My children, like yours, have to practice hiding in the bathroom to avoid an active shooter and don't even think about letting the teacher lead a prayer to get them through that moment because the is perfectly legal, but the prayers are not. I wish I had the solution. One part of it is courage, to get honest, to give a damn, to maybe take that $25 billion for the border wall and, as my friend Geraldo Rivera suggested, redirect it toward this problem. How about showing any resolve at all, any resolve at all to actually solve this problem? Wouldn't that be a start? In the meantime, we will be waiting and praying. Megan, you were about to say something when I cut oh, you no. off. I mean, I think I said a lot, and if everyone wants to respond. Now, I just want to make sure that th this side is also represented at the table, which it is, and by all means, I know you wanted to speak, Joy. 
Well, I was going to talk about the teachers for a second because I was a teacher. Mm -hmm. I believe you don't want me to have a gun. Yeah. <laughs> My mother's, a t my mother's a teacher, my aunt is a teacher, and I don't, th their job is not to be gun wielders. They're supposed well, somebody, to be teaching our children. I know. Somebody said, somebody said something uh, in the, uh, yesterday, the CNN or wherever it was, both of those things that I thought was very interesting. One of the teachers said, I don't want to be responsible to have to shoot someone. I mean, it's, it's bad to get shot, but to shoot someone, I mean, I don't know if I could live with that. And actually, I think I the teacher know. who said it, I... I um, I'm, I'm blanking out on her name, but there's a teacher there who is a gun owner who was at Parkland, yes. and she said, you know, I'm, I'm now reconsidering AR-15s. We've seen one of, our, one of the biggest Republican donors I know, Al Hoffman. You might yeah. remember him. He raised hundreds of millions for the Republican Party, and um, he said, I'm not giving any more money to anybody who does not support a assault weapons ban. Yeah. And I yeah. think people need to take a yeah. stand. I think it's time that people... Many states, do, by the way. Many states do, by the way, including New York, where we're in right now. But I will say this thing about the teachers. I need to emphasize again, President Trump is talking about people with military experience who are comfortable. But do you know that's what he also is talking about training? Do you really think that's about practical? Do you know how many schools there are in this country? So I was You're yeah. going to have military trained people in every school? I think it's, schools it's need to be impossible. guarded much more than they are now. I think they'd be better security. Well, and I do think if you have ROTC statistics? or military experience, no, can we I don't talk have about, a problem with you we, arming and having a can gun. Can we talk about in, statistics for a second? Can we talk about facts? Yeah, because I think facts, facts matter. Everyone that has done a study. You know I'm not sitting here spouting off hubris. I just gave you a ton of facts. Every, every, 39 stop, 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 stop. Okay, finish. stop. Oh Everybody just stop. Take a breath. Yeah. Everybody just take a breath. I just want to talk. I understand. Everybody wants to talk. Let's just take a breath because all I'm hearing is, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. and so we can't hear yeah, anything. You can't talk at the same you time. You can't talk at the same time. Yeah. I just want to say something. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, if we look at the facts, if we look at the statistics, everyone that has done the studies in law enforcement, at Harvard, at all the think tanks, they have shown that more guns do not make people safe. Less guns make people safe. They have shown that, that having guns readily accessible makes not only homicide more likely, suicide is more likely, and shootings by accident is more likely. So when we have the President of the United States advocating more guns, teachers having guns, I wonder where are we as a country that we now no longer look at statistics, we well, no longer look at studies, and we no longer look at facts. May I speak? Right. You have something? <laughs> Say, I, I, I was going to say, there is, if you follow the money, more guns is more money for gun manufacturers. So there might be the NRA. I mean, the other thing about the NRA, I never really thought about it until recently, the NRA. And years ago on this show, that we wanted to bring up the NRA. People would say to me, don't talk about them. They go after you. It's scary. I think that that is different now. I think that people are taking on the NRA. And a lot of mm -hmm. people in Congress, they, somebody said this morning, if you can't take on the NRA, you're in the wrong job. And I think that that made a lot of sense. Well, now, I respect people who have guns. Let me just say one more thing. I respect people who have guns. I once lived in the woods. People know the story. I was trapped out somewhere in the middle of the woods with two bass and yeah. a baby. My husband went to Tijuana to do his Ph.D. Don't ask why. <laughs> and I was alone in the woods. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a handgun. Yeah. I remember saying to friends, why can't I get a gun? Just in case some weirdo. Of course, I was reading in cold blood at the time. That right. Book yeah. right. About these guys coming yeah. in and killing you in the woods. So I understand wanting a gun that you know how to use when you're trapped alone in, in, with babies in the woods. I don't understand why hunters and sportsmen need to use military-style rifles. That and is completely over uh, my head. Yeah, right. Can I just okay. say yeah. something? Now, we talked about this before, and I, I have so much respect for that because I think there's an impression with a lot of people that there are that liberals want to completely remove the Second Amendment entirely. No, and no. I think that is also a misnomer that I'm glad that is cleared up yeah, today. Yeah, of course. But okay. I don't so, even uh, as as the freak of nature at the table, yeah. <laughs> I just want to point out again. Yeah. There is no reason why the NRA cannot work with these parents and yeah. students. There is no reason. Because when you say, listen, we're looking at a lot of these school shootings, 
the kids are coming out of houses with a lot of guns. So we want to find a way to work this out. That's what people are trying to do. Less, you can't have guns, but hey, maybe there's too many and we need to take a look at it. So we have to have the conversation. Yes. The NRA has to hear it. They have to hear it. I think it's important. I think everybody at the table.